the impossibility of trying to teach someone how to strike with power in a one minute segment. Sorry guys, but that's just impossible. I've been working on my striking for more than 10 years, um, probably more than 15 years. It literally, it takes a lifetime and every time I get to the bag and I start working on a session, it's like I'm learning something new. Um, but I'll try and keep it down to just, I don't know, maybe one or two clips, three clips, we'll see. So, <clears throat> some of the key things you need to understand is that you need to punch with your body weight and not just your arm strength. I see a lot of guys just, you know, just extending the arm, um, you know, that sort of machine gun approach. Looks very fast and all, but there's no real power behind it. Um, you're not going to knock someone out, and that's what you want to do in a situation. You want to have that one punch knockout power. Um, to generate that power, it all starts in your core. Um, if you can think of your, uh, let's just use this handy rake. So if you can think of your spinal column and your central muscles surrounding it as the uh, bone in this rake and uh, the top here your shoulders so what you want to do is twist around and have your shoulders move in like that uh, just put that dangerous weight in the way before we hurt someone. Okay, so basically you want to have a square stance. Um, it's kind of important to have a square stance. You're not gonna generate power. You wanna generate power with your left and your right hand equally. So you need to have a square stance. If you have a traditional stance, you're only gonna get power with your back hand. And then your reach is gonna be compromised. Of course, it was square, and I reach is much further than here. I have to over reach and extend in, and my jab is basically that's just useless. You know, you're gonna give a guy a bloody nose, maybe piss him off, but nothing more than that. Come rounding again. <coughs> okay, so generate power with your core and twist your shoulders. Now, what you want to do is lead with your body and have your arms follow. That's difficult for a lot of people to to master. Um, so it starts, it's, so it'll start in your hips. Your hips will swing into a direction and your arm is going to follow. Okay. Not the other way around. You're not going to start with your arms and have your body weight follow. The reason for that, that you start with your body, is you want your arms to be as relaxed as possible. When you start with your arms, you have a tendency to keep them very sort of, you know, Hulk mode. Hulk smash! And yeah, that many people are wrong. So, what happens when you make contact with stiff arm is all the power that you're putting around the punch is going to get transferred back up your arm and that's going to tire you out. What you want to be able to do is just punch hard without getting fatigued and you do that by staying relaxed and punching with your body weight. Let's face it, most guys can easily um, squat or deadlift their body weight or double their body weight. You know, uh, you get some freaks out there who can do like 10 times their body weight. <laughs> but most of us aren't them. So if you compare that to how much you can shoulder press or barbell curl, it's like a fraction. Leaky roof. So that's just sort of science, really, using your body weight and the muscles of your upper body, your posterior chain, your whole abdominal core, um, 
muscles of your upper back much, much stronger than just your shoulders and your arms. So you're putting all that body weight behind the strike and you're keeping relaxed. The relaxed arm, yeah, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. You would not think that it would be able to generate power, but believe me, it, you can generate an insane amount of power just from basically a short distance away. And then you want to try and aim to strike with your middle knuckle. It's usually the biggest and strongest knuckle. Um, you'll probably hit some of this one, maybe a little bit of that one. But try and stay clear of hitting with your bottom three. Now, I come from a long line of uh, ninjutsu instructors and you know, we were taught to strike with your bottom three knuckles. And it's... If you're not striking full strength, it's okay, but you're, you, you need to think of what you're going to be striking and where you're going to be aiming. And it's just going to be the, the head, the neck, the chin. So if you're striking with the bottom three knuckles, you, you'd be coming in at a very strange angle to actually make contact. So it might work in in a certain context, but with your the straight punch where you want to make connection with the chin or the face or the jaw, uh, your middle knuckle is going to be your best bet. See, the middle knuckle. So what you want to, things to avoid is punching just on the surface and not striking through the target. Um, just using your arms. I see a lot of guys just striking with their arms, you know. Looks impressive and it's fast and all that, but there's no real power behind it. Second thing you want to do is you, as we're shooting uh, isosceles, you want to have a square stance. to be able to generate the most amount of power that way. Because the power, the, the center of the power basically revolves around your spine. That looks weird. Um, so, all the muscles of your back, your core, your posterior chain, your upper back, uh, your hips, that's going to be driving the punch, not your arms. It always starts from the core, you know. The legs can also get involved, giving you a little bit of a a boost. But it all starts with the body and then ends with the fist. So the arm trails the movement started by your body. That's very important. Never start punching with your arm first. First. Never start punching with your arm first. With your arm first and have your body weight follow. The problem with that is you're going to end up um, making your arm quite rigid and stiff and when you're hitting something heavy all that energy is gonna you know for every action is an equal reaction so all that energy is gonna just bounce back into your arm and you're gonna feel it in your shoulder and your joints and everything is not gonna be very lacquer as we say in our performance <coughs> you want to stay completely relaxed and um, Another thing the uh, relaxed posture helps you to do is you actually do not fatigue. When, I, when you're very tense and rigid and you are... Whew, like... I'm a little busy. Each one of those strikes that just landed, it felt like my brain was also like shaking. So you can only do it for a couple of strikes and then you sort of need to reorientate yourself because your brain's going blah, blah, blah. That's also a scientifically medical term. <laughs> and as you can tell from my breathing, it, it actually tires you out uh, very quickly. <clears throat> so 
um, you strike sustain Completely relaxed. 